Currently, in the United States, about one third of deliveries are by cesarean section. The percentage of deliveries occurring by cesarean section has been increasing steadily over the past few decades. The percentage of people affected by infertility has also been increasing. Is it possible that having a C-section could make it more difficult to become pregnant again? Stay tuned. A large study in the past of nearly 600,000 women reported that women who had cesarean delivery were 9% less likely to have a subsequent pregnancy and 11% less likely to have a subsequent live birth. That study left some unanswered questions. For example, were the women who delivered by cesarean less likely to want additional children or more likely to decide to delay subsequent childbearing? Or were they less likely to be able to conceive as a result of having a cesarean section. The first baby study followed women after delivery for three years. The primary goals of this study were to compare women who had vaginal deliveries or C-sections and determine how many were able to conceive after unprotected intercourse and how many were able to deliver. They also looked at other factors, such as whether miscarriage was more common. This was a fairly large study. 2,423 women completed the 36-month follow-up and 2,046 reported having unprotected intercourse during that time. 712 of them, or just under one-third, were delivered by cesarean. During the three years of follow-up, 77% of those who had a vaginal delivery became pregnant again, but only 69% of those who had a C-section did, a difference of 8%. When looking specifically at those women who were trying to conceive, 6% more women conceived after a vaginal delivery compared to a C-section. There was no difference in the rate of missing miscarriage. Ultimately, the live birth rate was 50% after vaginal delivery and 43% after C-section. Researchers also looked at how quickly these women were able to get pregnant. Starting at the sixth month of unprotected intercourse and every six-month period afterward, less pregnancies were conceived in the C-section group. This study adequately answers the questions we had before. We have confirmed that less women are able to conceive and deliver a baby after having a C-section. This difference isn't due to them not wanting to have another pregnancy. Women who were actively trying to have another baby were simply unable to get pregnant as often as those who had a vaginal delivery. The next question is why? It wasn't because they were having intercourse less often. It wasn't because of some identifiable factor in the women who had C-sections, such as a difference in their weight or having problems getting pregnant the first time. One possibility is a problem with the uterus itself. Recently, we have learned that some women develop a defect at the site of the cesarean incision, which is referred to as an isthmocele or niche. Using ultrasound, about 60% of women with a C-section can be found to have one of these uterine defects. Some studies have suggested that this may increase the risk of subsequent infertility. It is also possible that cesarean section makes it more likely that the fallopian tubes will become blocked. Studies have shown that this occurs in about 15% of women after a cesarean section, but whether this is more than with a vaginal delivery is unclear. Another possibility is that scar tissue may form in the abdomen, which makes it more difficult for the egg to get picked up by the fallopian tube at the time of ovulation. Finally, it has been reported that the implantation rate and pregnancy rate after in vitro fertilization are significantly lower among women with prior cesarean delivery than those with prior vaginal delivery. Our Infertility TV bottom line is this. It is more difficult to conceive again after having a cesarean section though the reasons are unclear. As the percentage of deliveries from cesarean section continue to increase, we would expect that the percentage of people with fertility problems will increase as well. Infertility TV is your most trusted source for accurate information on infertility and miscarriage. If you are not a subscriber yet, hit the subscribe button right now. A new episode is released every week. Don't miss any episodes. You can also check us out on our website, ivf1.com, where you can become a patient.